primary school pupils will inherit the earth, so it's only right that they're taught how to manage it responsibly. And today on Resource Review, we're looking at three resources to help teach them about green issues. They are a pop-up book that explains how plants affect our lives, a circus performance with an environmental twist, and a book full of green tips and guidance. Recommending today's resources is Kim Jackson. Kim is the Environmental Education Officer for Brighton and Hove City Council. On the panel today we have Maggie Smith, Lecturer in Education at the Open University and Chair of the Geographical Association's Environmental and Sustainable Development Education Working Group and Education Consultant Adrienne Jones. And our resource investigator Matthew Tosh is out and about seeing what pupils and teachers think of the resources. Well, Kim, your first choice of resource for us today is this wonderful looking pop-up book, The Global Garden. Tell us what it is about this book that you like so much. I think this book is its so attractive and it's really tactile and I don't think it matters what age you are, you just want to uh, open it and play with it. So a key stage one child is just going to find it really fascinating. There's so much to see and play with. I think certainly for younger children using this um, really just gets the message across at a really early age about global interdependence, how everything is linked to everything else. So just because we're here in the UK, whatever's going on thousands of miles away is, is related to us. Thank you. Well, let's catch up now with our globetrotting resource investigator, Matthew Tosh, who visited Glebe First and Middle School to see what Catherine Brown and her eco-group think of the Global Garden. Inspired by Cornwall's Eden Project, the Global Garden pop-up book provides a guide to the Earth's natural resources. And the idea is it teaches children about how we use plants in everyday life. Now, there are some activities here, like this thing that you can turn. It shows you the, the plant cycle. And underneath this leaf here, it teaches you about photosynthesis. There's also a series of pull-out booklets about different materials. But by far the most exciting thing has to be these fantastic pop-ups. Well, I'm off now to see Catherine Brown and her Eco Club to see what they make of this book. Lots of plants. Flowers and trees. Flowers and trees. Grass and bushes. Grass and bushes. You pull there. There. And pull. And already we've got pop-up rubber trees. Mm -hmm. There's loads of stuff in there, isn't there? So Kathy, can you talk me through the lesson today? Today I did a humanities lesson using the Global Garden as a starting point. It was a really interesting activity where they had to locate the different resources, natural resources found on Earth, and put the, that information onto a map of the world. And we used the pull-out tabs to look at the different natural resources. They found out the history of some of the resources and they saw that there was um, nice, interesting comments about coffee, tea. So it was really good, a good starting point. It's a very um, interesting resource for the children because they could use it as a kinesthetic because they could pull at the tabs and poking at the pop-up. When I first saw the resource, I thought it was colourful, eye-catching. I would use that from Key Stage 1 up. Is there anything that you're not too keen on? There was a page about... Um, photosynthesis, that maybe there might have been a glossary that would have been useful, particularly with our EAL learners, because they would struggle with some of the words that were found in the book. Potatoes from South America. And how have the children reacted to this? They really enjoyed using it. They actually asked if they could have one for the library, and it's a resource I would use again. Thank you very much, Cathy. And now we'll go back to Hermione. Well, Kim, the Global Garden seemed to go down really well in that school. But I'm not sure it's very robust. I mean, would it really last very long in a primary classroom? Probably not in a classroom. I think it would probably need to be looked at in, in smaller groups yeah. and certainly talked through with a teacher or a teaching assistant because clearly there are lots of little fiddly bits that you wouldn't want to damage. <laughs> no. The other thing that I wanted to ask you about is which age group do you think it's most effective with? I mean, it does cover, as we saw there, photosynthesis, which seems to be quite a, a complicated 
um, theory, but other bits of it seem aimed at quite young children. Yes, I mean, I think traditionally you think of a pop-up book and open the flat book as for very young children. And I think clearly that's where they're coming from. If uh, you come up against a word like photosynthesis and chloroplast, well, at least um, the teacher's going to be able to explain that as, as you go along. OK, Maggie, what did you make of The Global Garden? I thought it was an amazing book. I was absolutely entranced by it. Um, the artwork particularly is, is stunning, as we can see in the, in the pop-up uh, yeah. bouquet. But I also very much liked its flexibility. I felt that it could be used, as we saw in the video clip, um, by a class teacher. It could be used by individual pupils, uh, although admittedly it might not be uh, suitable for a whole class um, activity. It's a very um, cross-curricular and a multi-subject based book. There's bits of history, there's bits of uh, social impact, there's bits of science in there. Um, and I, I think it, it, from that point of view, it's excellent. And it's not afraid to, to go into words like stomata and chloroplast, which is very good. OK, well, um, Adrienne, what did you make of it? I thought it was a very attractive book, but I found it very irritating. I thought it was a bit of a mishmash of content. It starts off with um, looking at things that grow from the earth, which is fine, and it sort of mentions tea and coffee in places. Uh, it's got a funny little reference to woad, which seemed an odd adjunct to put in there. I think it's really interesting and it's got lots of little bits, but I'd like to have seen a bit more sort of joined upness where you get the page that was shown in the extract, it's fantastic, it's enticing, you want to know what's underneath it. But I think it takes quite a lot of work on the part of the teacher to actually get the best out of it. I see each individual pop-up page as, as a starting point for a whole sort of tangent, really. Uh, clearly the page that uh, is open there, looking at rubber and coffee and tea and cotton, you can do a whole thing around geography, where stuff is grown, where it travels from. Um, you know, there's, there's just so much you could cover, but you would have to go off in these different directions to do it. OK, let's move on to Kim's second choice of resource for us today. And it is a performance, uh, The Compost Crusaders from Circus Takeaway. Now, explain this resource to us, Kim. Right, well, Circus Takeaway is a theatre company and they're based down in Kent. They do several shows. They do the Super Recycling Hero, they do Lost in Litter, they do the Fun Fit Food Show and clearly Compost Crusaders as well, all about environmental issues and they are so entertaining. There's a whole level aimed at adults as well. OK, well, he's not quite a caped crusader, but let's catch up now with Matthew Tosh. We're here at Ticehurst and Flimwell C of E Primary School where the Circus Takeaway Show Compost Crusaders is about to begin. Well, it really is about to begin, so I better get in and see how it goes. It's Captain Compost! I'm here to talk about something called compost. That can go to the compost as well. There are two reasons why these chickens should not go in the compost. One, because they're meaty, nothing meaty in the compost. And two, because they're cooked. Nothing meaty, nothing cooked into the compost. Laura, we've just seen the performance. What did you think of it? I thought it was really good. It was really entertaining for the children. It's really visual and interactive, and it conveyed a really important message as well. It's given them more ideas about what they can put into a compost heap. It can give them ideas for their home life and also for school life, and it's caring for their environment, which we, as a school, are very passionate about. The thing is, we should be composting, we should be recycling these things. And if we did, instead of having this horrible tip, maybe we could have the bottom bit, a park, a garden, a nice green open space. What do you think this approach to composting gives that maybe doing it in the classroom doesn't? It was portrayed in such an entertaining way that it was really memorable for the children. Uh, discussing it with the children, they remembered a lot from it, from saying, oh, I remember the cycle because of the Diablo, and they remembered it just because it was so visual and interactive for them. Is there any age group you think this particularly appeals to? Definitely for primary age group, through from foundation all the way to key stage two, I think it appealed to the whole audience. Just from watching the children, they were all engrossed and they enjoyed it. It's something that we couldn't really produce as a school without a lot of prior preparation. So, yeah, overall impression? It was really enjoyable um, for the children. It conveyed a complete message that they really understood. I think it's given them a lot to think about throughout um, their home life and as they grow older, I think they can think about different ways that they can care for their planet. Definitely, it's certainly given me a few things to think about. Thank you very much 
And now let's get back to Hermione. Well, Kim, that looked like a lot of fun. Now, if you're based in the southeast, then Circus Takeaway, great resource potentially. But what about in the rest of Britain? Well, there are other sort of theatre companies of a similar quality uh, you know, around the country. So I would suggest to schools to you know, tap into whoever's local to you, really. Well, over here on the panel, Adrienne, do you like this sort of thing? I do. <laughs> It's jolly good fun and you, there should be fun in learning. And this particular group has quality as a theatre and education group. Um, it, it offers a kind of intelligent take on being environmentally green. And the important thing about that though is that the school as a whole has an ethos by which it supports that. And although he did mention about taking the message home, I think it's something that schools could do really well. Maggie, what are your thoughts? Yes, it certainly has the wow factor, doesn't it, as we heard from the children. Um, my only reservation, maybe, was that it was restricted to composting, so it was very narrow focused. But if the school were doing something like creating their own compost bin uh, at the time, then that would support mm. that sort of activity very well indeed. Kim, what would you say to that? They do a whole range of environmentally based shows, so you have a choice. Well, time now to move on to Kim's third choice of resource for us today, and it's a book, and it's called Super Kids. Kim, we've got a couple of copies over here. Tell us about Super Kids. Well, this is a book that I, I tend to give out as prizes um, in our various recycling competitions that we run. It covers lots of different topics like water, um, energy, toys, and it refers to parents as zombies as well. There's a fun survey at the back that they can do, and there's also um, a certificate of shame that you can give to your parents if you think... And your teacher. Yeah, if you think <laughs> they're not doing their environmental bit, which I think is quite fun. Right, OK. Maggie, did you like Super Kids? Yes, it was an interesting book, and, and I thought it's very much for the individual child to dip into, but I thought also with the whole class, the thought for the week, maybe, or the action for the week, something like that. Mm. Uh, some very interesting ideas. I particularly like the idea that um, we should start to look at seasonal food, and we should start to look at food miles, and I thought that would be a, a very valid starting point. Adrienne? I think it could be seen on one level as a big guilt trip for adults with children getting their own back and kind of finger wagging and saying why don't you do this and you should do that but I thought there were there was enough information in it, a factual information, that children could take on board and maybe explore. I think it's certainly something you could do in, as a class so a teacher could take that on. Well, thank you all very much. I'm afraid that's all we've got time for today. But to recap, the three resources that we've looked at are The Global Garden, published by Random House Children's Books, The Compost Crusaders Performance by Circus Takeaway, and Super Kids, published by Think Publishing Limited. For more information about all of the resources we've discussed, go to our website, it's teachers.tv forward slash resource review, or if you want to, email us, resourcereview at teachers.tv. Thank you very much to our panel today, to Kim, to Maggie and to Adrienne. Thank you for joining us. We'll see you next time on Resource Review. Bye-bye. <laughs>